The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for Trade What You See with your host, Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Traditionally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. today good afternoon folks um gonna have a trip down memory lane today uh i had an interesting uh weekend uh years ago uh going back into the 80s um i was able to uh be a uh consultant uh, uh expert witness for one of the larger firms uh yeah, the largest firm on the west coast one of the largest in the country uh, just like out of that uh, TV uh, thing, Suits, only about 100 times bigger than that. It was in the Crocker Bank building in downtown Los Angeles. And my first uh, my first uh, venture there is I had to work with an attorney um, that I'd never met before. It was on a uh, case of uh, churning against Dean Witter. And, of course, uh, most attorneys don't understand statements, not that I did, but, but they didn't understand statements very well. And so that was one of the things that I worked on. But I'll never forget this because the guy's name was Cantwell F. Muckenfuss. That was his name. Uh, he since passed away. And uh, But what was really funny is when I went up to the receptionist, I asked her, I said, is that the Cantwell from San Marino? And San Marino's, for those of you who don't know, is the the uh, super Beverly Hills of the Los Angeles area. It's near Pasadena, and everything there is a huge mansion. And uh, I said, is he the one that went to Harvard? And she said, well, yes, that is him. Well, I mean, this guy was so preppy, it was unbelievable. Well, we got along good. The case went great. And um, on uh, Friday... Friday of this past week, I'm not feeling very good, and I got a call from one of the attorneys there, and they needed a uh, they needed a quick uh, consultation on something, and I said I would be happy to do it. The usual people were uh, on holiday, and so it only took me a couple hours by phone to go over it. But the question was, and this is why I'm bringing this up to you folks today, is all of the counts there uh, are huge. I mean, everything there is multi-million. I mean, a million dollars won't even get you in the door to that place, but most of them are between five and you know 20 50 100 and even more into the billions uh you know uh, uh, bob hope had his account there Bing crosby elvis presley i mean all these guys were managed by 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 parts of this firm uh, and anyway uh the question that the customer asked uh, to his account is why if the stock market's up so much why isn't he doing better and so they went to the money manager that they that they outsource, and the money manager gave him a uh, a uh, answer. And so they wanted to check the answer to see if that was the, in fact what really happened. And the question he had was, look, he said, I've been long stocks for you know several years now, and I'm doing pretty well, you know, but this year I haven't made any money since July. And so all I did was I took his statements and I compared them the end of the month in June, the end of the month in August, and the end of the month in November, and I could see that he was he was had a broad section of indexes, uh, index funds, different ones. Some of them had done pretty well, some of them had not done very well, but overall he was only up about 1%. And so I told him, I said, it's just a matter of selection. I said, you know, if, you, if you're going to be broad-based like this, which is what you should be doing, you, know, you want to be well-diversified, you shouldn't expect to go with the market that's only really 630 stocks. <coughs> that was what my answer was, and that was, in fact, what the, money management, what, it, what the money manager said. Now, what I wanted to talk to you about, since we're talking about memory lane, back in the, the late 60s when I was in Los Angeles trading at the Conti Commodity Office, there was a man, named, that, a man there named uh, Bill Ohama, O-H-A-M-A. He was Japanese-American. Uh, he was uh, studied at SC. Uh, he was one of the first people ever to use uh, MACD stochastics and all of these kinds of things. This guy was really heavily into it. This was long before we had computer uh, computers and stuff, as you can might imagine. Uh, we didn't have any. All we had was a Bunko Ramo board, but Bill did all this stuff with a uh, Texas Instrument uh, calculator, and he was very good at it. And he, he looked at a lot of different oscillators and things, but one of his favorite things was the new highs to new lows. And um, that's the real 
the real thing that they wanted to uh, to look at is to see you know how the market, the breadth of the market was actually doing. Uh, one of his favorite indicators is when the stocks are making new highs, but you're you're not making uh, more new highs and lows. Advanced declines uh, are are lagging. In other words, there's more declines than advances. That tells you that there's something wrong with the market. Well, last week when the market was making new highs, we actually had more new lows than we had new than new highs two days in a row. Uh, and this is a, a very, very bearish uh, scenario. We can see that if we look at the uh, New York Stock Exchange Index because we've had this divergence that we've been talking – well, I've been talking about it here, and you've been laughing about it, which is okay. I think that's fun. But uh, that's really what's been happening to the market. The market has gone absolutely nowhere. Now, the NASDAQ has gone up, and the S&P has gone up, and the Dow has gone up, but not the New York Stock Exchange Index, and that's the biggest of all the indices. We've now had the third major divergence that we've had here. <laughs> I have never seen two. Uh, now I'm seeing three. So, uh, folks, the only way this can end is badly. That's that's all I can tell you. My, my history in this market goes back a long way, plus all the years that I studied before I, uh, you know, got into trading and after I got into trading. But this is what uh, this is what you're dealing with is something that really looks uh, tremendously uh, negative from a breadth standpoint from a uh, market assets uh, of people thinking the market's going up in other words bull versus bears the fear index the vix index you know everything says it uh, should be going down and down very fast this is not just going to back off a little bit i have to disagree a bit with basil here but he's right more than i am so i am entitled to disagree with him but i think when the break comes it's going to be really nasty uh, but they don't let people out. They don't let the the, the little people uh, out easily. And uh, believe me, uh, it's it's going to be it's going to be nasty. Because when the corral and everybody's in the corral and they open the door to the corral, there just isn't enough room through that door to get out in time. And with all this electronic stuff that we have now, I think we're going to see something you know really really nasty. Uh, I've been watching it very very, very closely. Uh, I mean, it really hasn't gone anywhere. Uh, it really hasn't since, uh, well, a couple weeks now. And if you look at these little tiny narrow range days that we have up in here, this is really, uh, really quite, uh, quite amazing in itself. Last night was a interesting night because they were talking about, I had several flashes uh, come across that the Nikkei Dow was trading at the same price as the um, the Dow Jones Industrial Average at 18,000 or right near that now, 17,900 and change, whatever it happened to be. That's like comparing grapefruit to a baby bottles. I mean, come on. That Nikkei used to be trading at nearly 40,000. Give me a break. I mean, that's just a, it's just a round number is all it is. That doesn't mean anything at all, uh, in my opinion. Uh, you know, that's it really it. Now, We've had a request to take a look at the banking index chart, and I certainly looked at that uh, over the weekend <coughs> because that is one that has been, um, you know, been very, very bullish. And I want to bring that up to to show you folks that that's what's been happening. Give me a second here, and I'll get this up here. Okay, yeah, we're still making new highs today, and. Uh, uh oh, I'm not getting data. Hold on just one second. Let's see what's wrong here. I think I'm one day behind here, but we'll see uh, what we're having. We're either having a third drive to a top here, or this market's, you know, the banking index is going to keep uh, keep going higher. Uh, the first chart that I posted into the Tiger Den today was the one for the SOX semiconductor, semiconductor index, and that's the one that's been the, uh, the really strongest uh, of them all. And so that's uh, you know one of the things that uh, you know we've been we've been watching anyway as far as the the way it rotates I guess is what you'd be what you'd be calling it so we'll have to and just to see what occurs but they have been going through these different rotations as they go through and um, uh, believe me this advanced decline line really does mean something folks when you have stop and think of it a minute <laughs> when you have a market 
that's making new highs, but you're making more new lows than you are new highs. That's not good breath, folks. Uh, that's bad breath. That's halitosis. Uh, and that's when you get that uh, two days, uh, two times in one week. Uh, Bill Ohama called that the Titanic syndrome. And uh, I don't know if it's going to be like the Titanic or not, but I think there's an iceberg in the water. That's what it looks like to me. I mean, it's just got, and I don't think it's going to be easy to extricate ourselves out of this. Um, that's the, the what's the way I read it. You know, I I've been in these markets before on the other side, and I always always there wishing and hoping. You know, that after the top was in, it would go back to the top, and you know, usually it takes it you know much much longer, you know, to ever you know get to that point. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention that the advanced decline line, as first time in a long time, had more declines than advances. New highs, to, new lows have exceeded new highs. <coughs> Excuse me. That's what what's happening again today, and so we we should really keep that uh, into mind. Now I know <laughs> I know the market's breaking since I came on the air, but folks, I had nothing to do with that. Honest to God, I really didn't. Uh, my one lot E mini didn't have any effect on uh, any effect on the market at that time. There must have been some type of a news announcement that came out uh, to look at it. Uh, one of the uh, one of the things that's really on my mind is the dollar index because everybody is so bullish that dollar index now, and uh, we're having some real serious uh, uh, resistance coming up here at this 90 level in the U.S. dollar index. Uh, that equates to the number of 98 and change in the Swiss franc and uh, 122 in the Japanese yen. We went through 120, 120 like it didn't even exist on Friday. Now we backed off uh, to test that level one more time. And it should hold it is is what I would think uh, would be happening. So that's you know primarily what I'm watching uh, you know with the currencies. Uh, the the yen the whole world is talking about the yen uh, between uh, 135 and 200. Uh, you know when Tom O'Brien liked it back at 75 and 77. You know everybody was talking about 65 in the yen. So uh, King Dollar has certainly reared its head. Uh, we should put a statue up there at. Uh, you know, 608 uh, Cleveland Street in Clearwater for uh, Mr. O'Brien for his fabulous call. And that's probably one of the greatest calls I've seen in all my years uh, in this business. And I've been doing this uh, a very long time. So we'll wait and see, you know, where this top is going to be. If, in fact, there is going to be a top in the, in the uh, Japanese yen here. But we'll have to... Uh, let the market decide. The Nikkei has run into relatively good resistance here at 18,000. That was the old high we made back uh, several years ago uh, before we had the financial uh, debacle that we're having now. But it's still, you know, quite early, you know, to see if that is going to, uh, you know, be the case or not. It's still, you know, way too early uh, to see that. Uh, one of the things we need to cover when we come back from the short break is we need to cover the uh, oil complex because uh, everybody's getting a tax rebate here at Christmas time that they'll be able to spend at Amazon. And uh, we'll see what happens with that, too. So we'll be back after the break. The Dow's down a bit. Crude oil's breaking and gold's down a little on the day. Not much, though. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. 
Check out the new look of Tiger TV. Now you can see all hosts, charts, and computer screens live in high definition. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesavento, Andy Hecht, Think or Swim, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV. Now, crystal clear in high definition, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't seen the new look of Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity markets of subscribers with specific recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investments, and whether you're bullish or bearish on Chinese stocks, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Larry takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Hi, folks. And, uh, as I mentioned, Clearwater, Florida, we have a caller from Clearwater, Florida. Dave, are you there? <clears throat> yes, sir. Larry, how are you, sir? I'm good. You can drop the sir part, okay? I uh, can't help it. Can't I know. Help. I know. If you ever get the dial down a thousand points, you can call me sir. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. I'll call you, you can call sir. You called me anything but uh, late for dinner, Dave, but yeah, that's okay. What no, can I help I, you with, I buddy? apologize to you, Larry. I can't help it. I was raised by a father who's a veteran, <laughs> southern upbringing. I'm a veteran uh -oh. myself. I, I, I can't help it. Can't help it. I just I refer to people as sir. But anyways, um, I, I wanted to see if you were seeing a, a T5 pattern setting up on the uh, the hourly on the e-mini just before we saw that drop. And I think the drop's kind of confirming that it, it, pro it probably was one. But if, before we do that, I was wondering if I could tell you a short little true story, if you don't mind. It could either be a false story, but go ahead and tell it, Dave. But we like true stories the best because they're easier to follow up on. <laughs> there you go. Well, I okay, promise buddy, you this ahead. is. I promise you this is 100 percent the truth. And I'll, and I'll tell you, Larry, I hadn't thought about this in decades until I heard the word halitosis. When I was a kid in middle school, seventh grade middle school, I grew up in Miami, and um, a friend of mine and I decided that we would uh, improve our standing in life if we played hooky from school on Friday and uh, took our fishing poles down to uh, the Intracoastal there and decided to uh, fish in, in the uh, the port of Miami. And we go fishing. We have a good old time, beautiful day. Month, and next thing you know, Sunday comes around and it's like, man, you, you couldn't go back to school without a note from your parents and they're explaining your absence if, in the event they didn't call in that day. 
And, of course, you know, playing hooky from school, mom and dad did not call him because they thought I went to school. So I'm thinking to myself, oh, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? And at that point in time, my much older sister was in nursing school and was complaining that my middle sister, who had just eaten some garlic bread, had chronic halitosis. And, and I remember laughing at the time and thinking to myself, what in the world is halitosis? And my sister explains to me that it's bad bread. So I write this note in the best handwriting I could to mimic my dad's handwriting that on Friday I had been suffering from an acute case of halitosis and has since recovered over the week and please admit him into school. And sure enough, they brought the note, Larry. <laughs> I kid you not, man. Yeah. I kid you not. I was so nervous yeah. handing that note over to the principal. Woo. Oh. Scary. scary. I, scary, I did scary. my share. Of, I did my share of playing hooky, but I have to tell you, uh, uh, a really interesting story about playing hooky. Uh, I used to go to China uh, to give speeches, you know, to different universities, and one of the big universities is in Chengdu, China. And uh, the, the fellow that invited me there had, had a little 10-year-old boy named Andy, a really nice little guy, and he could speak every, he spoke like four, little, four different languages, and he went to, uh, you know, uh, the, one of the private schools there, and they had this huge earthquake, you know, and it, it did just demolish the school. And, um, they thought that because all the children were died, there were 450 children who died in the school that day, and he was at, supposed to be at school, but he and his buddies went fishing instead. Oh, and, of course, wow. when they were fishing and the earthquake happened, they got really scared. They didn't know what to do, and they didn't want to go home because they had skipped school. They didn't know the school had been destroyed, so finally it got late, and he had to go home. And so the whole family was there mourning and crying and everything, and he opens the door, and everybody starts screaming, and he got scared, and he ran away. And um, they, they, but he did well. He, they thought he was going to be, uh, you know, be chastised for it. But he was uh, he was saved because he went fishing that day. And uh, um, his his father uh, Cyrus, uh, you know, he always jokes about that. That was the best day he ever had when his kid cut school. So yeah, <laughs> anyway, let's talk about the markets a little bit. They're they're never out of school. They're always running up and down. But more 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 up than down these days. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. I was wondering, um, if you would, please, because I've been trying to more and more, you know, pick up and, and identify the uh, five-point reverse wave. Sure. And um, I was wondering if you wouldn't mind putting the uh, E-mini S&P on an sure. hourly. On an hourly? Yeah, we can do that without any trouble an at all here. And if we come to the break, just stay with me, Dave, because we can all see this together, and that would make it uh, – you know, so we'll be able to see it. And, oh, you got it spot right. You sure did. Uh, that was the one from early this morning you're talking about, correct? Well, I'm seeing a couple of them, yeah. There's one yeah, from early this morning, and then if you take, there's that. <clears throat> that's the second one. And then there's a larger one, that mm -hmm. unless I'm missing something. It started on uh, November 21st, let's say at uh, 9 a.m. That's point one. And then point two is 1 p.m. that afternoon. Yes, that's correct. And then point three is four o'clock on the twenty-sixth. That's correct. Point four is either the uh, you know the nine a.m. or the ten a.m. because they're both at the same price point. Four, and then yep. five was um, was on the uh, the fourth, and then yeah. to the point you just made a second ago, there's a second one. That's correct. Now, that second one is a lower high, which is okay, but it does uh, make it. Well, I'm going to put this in. You stay with us, Dave, till after the break, okay? And we'll discuss yes, this more. Okay. We'll be right back, folks. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. 
If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter. And if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. No matter where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 8 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern. And you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can use your smartphone to view Tiger TV. But if you don't have a mobile connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.MOBI in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and radio call and talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back with Dave from Clearwater. Dave, are you still with us? <clears throat> yes, I am. Uh, I posted that chart of the uh, hourly E-mini in there, and as you can see, uh, you certainly did have that five-wave uh, T6 pattern, you know, pegged pretty right on and you'll notice that the we just made these little slightly higher highs ever since november 21st i mean the market's really gone nowhere and the new york stock exchange index has been rolling over so you know this is not a good sign and with new lows exceeding new highs for a couple of days that's a that's another bad sign if the market stays down today that would be a third day that it's done that and that's really telling us that the breath is really getting bad. That goes back to our halitosis again. <laughs> yes, it is. The market is, uh, is exhibiting exceedingly poor breath. Um, I, yeah. I, I would agree with that as well. I'll tell you, at some point in time, the, uh, the, there's a dip, so we're going to buy a mentality, I think, is going to, uh, it's going to peter out because at some point in time, the market's going to have to price in a couple of things. From, and I realize you don't do fundamentals and i'm not the biggest player in fundamentals but at some point in time you know the majority of these earnings are are in you know these fortune 500 companies are overseas the higher dollar against the euro the higher dollar against the yen, and so on is going to going to bring back you know lower earnings moving forward interest rates at some point in time will have to go higher and obviously not anytime soon but within the next two or three quarters at some point in time some of this is going to start mattering yeah. um i would well, imagine whether it's in my you know, lifetime or not i'm not sure dave that's a question <laughs> yeah no doubt it's yeah I know, but the fact, i know but I, I know it's frustrating man i'm i'm a, i don't get me wrong i've gone long several times but i'm, I'm a frustrated uh 
despair at the moment here. Um, if there's time, uh, would you mind um, taking a look at uh, gold? I was talking with Tom uh, last week, and we were yes. we were talking about uh, gold. I'm very bullish on gold, and uh, I was curious as to uh, your impression of what you're seeing. Well, the only problem with the gold I have is, you know, we had that really strong rally in both gold and silver back on uh, uh, the end of the month. And uh, I really believe that that really means something because of the way that silver came back, you know, from $14 to almost $17. That was about a $15,000 move in one day. The problem is that we didn't have any uh, increases in open interest in either one of these. Now, that doesn't mean a lot because a lot of the trading in gold and silver is done in the cash market. And that could be what's, uh, you know, making the thing move. But as long as gold can stay above 1130 um, it's got to, it's still got a chance. Now, uh, the last time we went down there, you know, we rallied for 13 days and, uh, we rallied about 90 bucks and we did, you know, our $85 the first two days and that we really didn't go anywhere. So the real key here is what's going to happen on the pullback. What's amazing to me is the fact that silver hardly backs off at all. I mean, it's just literally dried up that no one has an interest in it. And you'd think after that big of a run, there would be either some type of profit taking or, you know, new new selling coming in at, at a much higher price, but in fact, that's not happening. So, it's still got a chance. The gold uh, XAU still looks okay; doesn't look great, but it's made the double bottom and hasn't you know taken out that double bottom. So, it's got a chance, but it's a slip. Okay, um, I'm hearing you. I'm looking at uh, gold on a, on an hourly. And uh, it's, you know, recently on Friday, although I don't like the, the volume spike that came in on Fridays, uh, let's see, on Friday at about, uh, let's say like 9 a.m., um, around uh, 8 a.m., the 8 to 9 o'clock time frame. Um, the thing that makes me think that, you know, the, uh, the the bear market, so to speak, that gold's been in for a while now is uh, is over with is, we you know, we had three, to your point a second ago, we had a tremendous sign of strength. Um, you know, prior to that, we had a couple other signs of strength. And what we've also had, as you well know, you were commenting on it earlier, is it just a tremendous continual run-up in the dollar. And, the, you know, the fact that gold just hasn't gotten destroyed, uh, to me, is a, is, a, is a bullish indicator. The, uh, the concern, uh, and which is why I asked you to take a look at it, is, is my, I agree with you that the, uh, the open interest um, you know, we, we need to see increased open interest come in so that we have sustained buyers and people that are holding the positions for, uh, you know, for a ex- decent, you know, period of time, an extended period of time. Um, so we'll see. You know, we've had a slight, at least from the information I'm seeing, at least today, a slight increase in open interest, um, you know, versus that big spike up we had uh, on, the, on the 1st of December. So it'll be interesting to, uh, interesting to see, Larry. I'll tell you, it's, um, it's kind of a wild one. Well, like the old Chinese curse, may we live in interesting times, and I, th- I think we certainly do. I, yeah. I really, you know, if if you stop and think back in the old days, Dave, you know, back when we had M1 and M2, we used to watch that all the time. If we had figures, you know, now, like we had back then, I mean, gold would be trading at 3500 to $5,000 because, uh, you know, there, that was the old uh, the era of... Uh, you know, sound money, the old, you know, he who has the gold makes the rules. Yeah. And uh, yeah. that's not the way it is anymore. It's he who has the credit breaks the rules. So <laughs> we'll see no what happens. This, this, no uh, doubt. And uh, at this yeah. point in time, I think all of us, uh, and, I, and I would imagine I can I speak for all of the United States, but uh, we could use a break from living in interesting times. <laughs> oh, <laughs> this is true. Good old fashioned so many boring things, prosperity uh, would be nice right about now. Yeah. <laughs> we we have so many friends in Hong Kong, and you know they're having a lot of uh, demonstrations over there. And one thing they're bringing up all the time is you know the fact that these two gentlemen that were killed, the fellow in Ferguson and the fellow in New York, you know about how brutal you know the policemen are here and stuff like that. But they don't even mention the fact that you know since August there's been 107 uh, teenagers uh, shot during robberies and uh, committing crimes, and just in the city of Chicago. Oh, no and, doubt. Uh, but you never see that in the news anymore. So you know, that's just a function of a you know area where they live, and they live in a really you know basically a war zone, though, and they're trying to stay alive, which everybody can understand. But that's not what the United States is about, you know. No, it's it's not. 
And I think, Larry, just to some extent, you know what's changed, I think, to, some, to a large extent? is just the, uh, the, the, the cost of, of information, what it takes to disseminate information, is, oh. is, is now nearly free in, the, in one sense yeah. because you can instantaneously blast this information around the world. As yeah. I mentioned in the beginning of my call, I grew up in Miami, and back in the 80s when, when crack was devastating, the country, it, uh, Miami was ground zero because at that point in time, it was before the Mexicans took over and the majority of the, dr- uh, the cocaine uh, importation was done through South Florida. And there were areas in Miami like Liberty City and Overtown, and, and there were these young men getting killed, you know, daily. And the difference between, and it was on the evening news in South Florida, you know, yes. but it wasn't making wasn't making national news, and it wasn't certainly wasn't making global news. You know, Reuters wasn't reporting that on their news wires, um, or UPI, or you know, uh, or the Associated Press, but. So to a large extent, Larry, it's been going on for a long time now. The difference is, I think, to a large extent, is we just it's publicized more and we just know it because of the information. We have all the social media, plus everybody's carrying their iPhone and uh, the cameras. You know, even my little Walmart camera has got a, or my Walmart phone, my $25 phone has a really nice camera. I didn't even know it had one, and my grandson, who's three and a half, showed me how to use it. You know, he saw the picture of the camera. He says, look, you can take a picture. And he took a picture. I didn't even know I had a camera with the thing. I mean, oh, this is man, really Oh, really? Oh, Larry, Larry. I hear you, man. Well, I, I will. I I'm going to go. I'm thinking about getting a color TV, Dave. That's one of the things I am going to be yeah, thinking about. Yeah. So, well, I, I won't say I'm quite on that level, although my son had to teach me how to use uh, use the uh, the iPhone here. But uh, I didn't know it had a camera, though. That's where I just couldn't figure out how to use it. But uh, anyways, Larry, listen to me. As always, I greatly appreciate you taking my call. And Thank uh, you very much, coming. and a happy holidays to you, Dave, if I don't talk Merry to Christmas you before. To you as well, sir. You bet. Okay, that was our friend Dave in Clearwater. Now we want to get back to the markets here uh, just a little bit. I posted into the charts here uh, a little earlier the chart on the Swiss franc because it's it looked like it was making a three drive to a top pattern. So far it has. It's backed off only about 70 pips uh, so far today, but it went to the exact 1.27 number there at uh, 98.18. So uh, that is one indication that that could be uh, you know, could be looking at it. But we're we're still having, uh, even though we're having a little bit of a rally today in in wheat. You know, we're still having you know commodities under a great deal of pressure. Uh, we've looked at crude oil already. How badly it looks. Uh, heating oil looks even worse, and this is a seasonal time when he- heating oil usually you know perks up pretty good. Gasoline prices are. You know they're about three dollars a gallon everywhere in the United States. In some places, under two fifty. Uh, in Tucson, we're uh, around two fifty a gallon, and uh, I know places in New Jersey are under two fifty a gallon. It's only California that you know is still holding up at the, you know, three fifty dollar three three fifty and stuff uh, per gallon. But all you know prices are dropping in in uh, in gasoline, which is good during the holidays because it gets gives people more time. Uh, to spend money because they have a little uh, extra bonus coming in from that. The problem is, is that the interest rate picture is beginning to look more and more sinister from the uh, from the short side. In other words, it's beginning to look like we're getting ready to see higher interest rates. Uh, I'd like to show the chart uh, that interests me uh, quite a bit, and that is the uh, T note interest, which is the one that is the uh, gives an indication of what the market is doing for credit cards. And for your uh, auto loans and your mortgages and things like that. And we just completed uh, last week that we mentioned on the commodity show that we had completed a 382 retracement. And now we've taken out the lows from November uh, so far today. And that tells us that we're looking at a potential to come down, you know, to near the lows of the year, down another, you know, three basis points. Uh, in the in the Treasury notes. Now, that's not what they're telling us in the news, but the Treasury note prices themselves are telling us that rates are going higher and not lower because when the rates go down on the T notes, uh, that means that the prices will go up. So if prices are going down, rates are going up, and that's what's happening. We're having higher interest rates occurring in the T notes and T bonds uh, as we uh, come in last week and then also uh, again this week. All of that is uh, you know coming together uh, at the same time, so keep in mind that uh, you know it's not always what they tell us. So we'll wait, wait and see. We got a we got a call from our friend Scott in Tampa. Scott, are you there? 
Ari, how are you doing? I'm good. Happy holidays to you, my friend. And, and the same to you. Uh, I got a. It's not a uh, technical question, but it's something that I've never understood. And I know you've been around a long time, and maybe it can add some clarity to this. I know a lot of times at the end of the year, the funds, the big funds, take some profit taking to reflect, you know, good numbers. <laughs> and uh, so sometimes, uh, you know, uh, it, you know, it, it it influences their. You know they're reporting, uh, but it could, I'm wondering how much of an ana- adverse effect uh, it would have on the market, or if it could stimulate a, a downturn, or if uh, and you know I mean I personally believe that the banks and all the people that are making the markets go higher are somehow manipulating the markets. You know, it's money, you know, that's going into the markets. Is there a way for funds to get in and out? You know, do a quick. Turn. I know they could do things that you will not see reported. I'm, I'm almost yes, sure of that. That's correct. Um, is there a way for them to flip their accounts, uh, be able to report their profits, and not create something that's so transparent that it could induce a, a significant downturn in the markets? Uh, can, can you talk about the politics and the yeah. uh, mechanics? The, of actually, that? years ago that was uh, that was easy to do but now with the uh, accounting the way that they have it they have it as first in first out and they also do mark to the market in other words that means at the end of the month uh, the, the funds are marked to the market so that you know they, people are not stupid they know that if it's the end of the quarter and you've had a good quarter you know why don't you just sell everything in out and book the profits well they don't do that what they do is they mark it to the market in other words so if it's an up up quarter like we've had for you know, I don't know how many quarters in a row, but uh, they just mark it to the market, and that that is fair because then they start out with a clean slate. You know, the following you know the following month, like on November 30th, they start with a clean slate on December 1st, but it's the same positions. So if they have a profit in November and they lose it in December, they've still lost it, but they don't have to book it in order to get their money. In other words, they'll still be paid at the end of that quarter. Do you follow me? Yes. Yeah, that's that's the whole thing is that what they've done is they try to do this to keep that from happening. That doesn't mean that you don't see stuff like that happening. One of the biggest problems that they have in our industry is the fact that the way they they manipulate accounts, and that is that uh, they could have you know three or four big accounts, and if one of them is underwater and they have a big win in something, they can move the account after the trade is put on into another account, which is totally illegal. It's done. But it's totally illegal, and the firms really try to watch that very closely. But it's still done. It's almost impossible to stop, but uh, it is done that way occasionally. Not many of the major firms do that because the risk is too great. It would have to be a smaller firm uh, trying something like that. But no one like uh, Goldman Sachs would ever do anything that would they? Scott? Right, right. Well, yeah, I mean, right. is your sense yeah. of it? Is your sense that uh, I mean, they must see the uh, the risk of of any downturn yes. in the market. Uh, yes. Will they uh, will they act in a way that basically uh, doesn't precipitate? They can take their profits, and and therefore that won't be a factor in bringing the market down because uh, of, of no, their they fear. they don't care about. They don't care about that. They're to protect. They're there to perfect, protect themselves uh, first, and then the customer second. So, and not only that, but see, most of these folks are not technicians. Uh, you know, we're we're a really uh, a small breed of people on Wall Street compared to everybody else. Just about everybody else is a fundamentalist, and uh, you know that's why you see on CNBC and all the other things, uh, all the an analysts each day. You don't see a technician up there very often. Stay with okay. us, Scott. We until the break. We'll be right back. I appreciate it. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. EverBank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. 
If that excites you like it does me, visit everbank.com slash TFNN to find out what they can do for you. Again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. Visit them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. TFNN has just announced a special sale for the Gold Report for a limited time only. To celebrate the 660th weekly issue of Tom O'Brien's Gold Report, that's more than 12 years, TFNN is having a special one-time sale. Right now, you can receive 60 weeks of the Gold Report, that's 14 months, for only $600. We're offering Tom O'Brien's dynamic weekly newsletter at only $10 a week, half off the regular monthly price. By taking advantage of this special offer, you also get a signed copy of Tom O'Brien's best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, an $88 value. The Gold Report is published every Tuesday and provides subscribers with Tom O'Brien's expert commentary on the industry, as well as detailed information on a variety of mining equities. Not all gold stocks are the same. This offer is valid for current or new subscribers. All the details are on the front page of TFNN.com. The sale will be over before you know it, so act now and lock in this incredible price by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term profits. Prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. We're told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery and pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, unless you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. Up next, the Diagnostics Trading Hour with Daryl Martin here on TFNN. Scott, Tim, and uh, Scott, are you still there? Oh, I think we must have lost him. That's okay. Uh, I wanted to end the show here. Are you still there? Oh, I guess not. Anyway, I'd like to end the show today to talk a little bit more about the New York Stock Exchange Index because I believe it's that important. Uh, this is the third time that we've had divergence like this, going back to July. Had it again in September. We had it again in, on December the 3rd. Um, and uh, all of that is, uh, you know, very, very important, I believe. Uh, we have a full moon. Oh, dear. We have a full moon that we have coming in uh, at that time. And... Uh, I'm sorry, I, I had my my microphone turned up, and uh, it made it look a little bit like I was off the air. But the uh, the main thing that that I'd like to talk about with that index is the fact that this divergence is really important, folks, because this is the huge stock market itself. It's not the few stocks in the S and P, the 30 Dow stocks, and the 70 or 80 stocks in the Nasdaq 100 that is doing this. This is the this is the broad market of thousands of stocks. And when you have more lows, more new lows, that's new lows on the year, folks, being made uh, than new highs. That's a that's a very significant thing because usually you see that uh, at the opposite. Now, if this were reversed, 
if we were making a low in the stock market and we were seeing less new lows being made and more new highs, that would in turn be very, very constructive. So you got to look at it both ways. And this time it's looking like a potential for a negative. Now, we, we don't have anything uh, astrological uh, coming up other than the 15th of December, which is a, uh, a Bradley date. That'll be a week from today. We'll be on the air at that time. Uh, and then after that, we have the new moon coming in on December 22nd, which is the winter solstice. And uh, we'll have to uh, take a uh, you know take a look at what's happening at that time. That's a very important uh, time of the year. Uh, that winter solstice uh, that that really is goes back to uh, mythology and stuff. That it's it's a very very important time uh, coming in, and when we have that new moon on uh, December twenty second. Not only that, but it's two and a half days before Santa Claus arrives, and that's always an important day when Santa comes through. So I'd like to mention a little bit more about the interest rates. Um, we have broken down below last month's lows so far in the bonds and also in the notes. That's triggering uh, higher interest rates, folks. It really is. I know that the Fed is in there doing everything they want. But remember, folks, the Fed is not the Federal Reserve Bank. It's a private bank working for themselves under the auspices of the U.S. government. But believe me, their number one concern is not the United States of America's population. They're more concerned about the banking interest. And if you don't believe that, uh, you're being very naive. And I recommend you, you know, go and listen to or read the book, uh, The Creature from Jekyll Island. And uh, I think you'll you'll get a better idea of how some of these how some of these things actually happen. Just remember what um, uh, Thomas Jefferson said. He said, "I would rather have." control of the currency than all the standing armies in the world and i believe that's a uh, very important and we do have a we do have a currency war going on there's no question about it all you have to do is look at the yen look at the russian ruble uh you'll see some of these things that are just absolutely you know parabolic and that makes it a very interesting uh, uh time to watch this because these for, these countries are going to start protecting themselves they're not going to just lay there and get beat up. They'll they'll do something to protect it. Then it accelerates worse and worse, and that's the real key. So you want to be uh, you want to be able to see what really happens here uh, of what what happens with these things. So <laughs> remember that the Federal Reserve has twelve central banks that they deal with. So that's important. Anyway, live every day in an attitude of gratitude, and may God bless. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. You're watching Tiger TV.